in the footage we watched today, we saw, you know, a couple unique sea beasts. So I literally, I wanted to talk a little, a little bit about those, what it was like coming up for the look of those creatures and where you drew inspiration for those from, if you could just talk a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, the creatures were a combination of a lot of different um, uh, animals and from real life is mostly what we draw from. But at all times, we wanted to make sure they stayed creatures, stayed beasts. We didn't want to put, we didn't want to, we specifically didn't want to anthropomorphize or put a human brain in their bodies. So like um, some, so like we looked at whales and sharks and, uh, 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 and orcas uh, 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 as well as crocodile, any any unique combination. No no one creature drew from one animal. We we always made a cocktail for for them. Awesome. And then you know also with having such a varied re- resume when it comes to animation, you know I was wondering what is it like coming into a new project, especially one like the Sea Beast, where it's like a new sort of world that you're building and having to build that from the ground up and create this whole entire sort of mythology behind it. That's one of my favorite things about animation. It's like it's it, it, it could be so many art forms. There's I, I still think we're in a, the, the the infancy of animation. We're a pretty young medium still, if you compare it to other art forms. Uh, we've only we've only had a handful of decades that this has been going on. So, especially computer animation. So I think now that we're finding more and more tastes, and the thing that one of the things that drew me to this was just how much it's a film and how much it's it's drawing from a, a slightly more mature tone. It's still all audiences, but just a little bit more sophisticated than we often are. Definitely. And and speaking of the mature tone, you know, the atmosphere for the Sea Beast is very exciting, even in the 40 minutes that I saw. And then there were some moments where it was kind of scary almost, which I thought was like interesting for a child's home. And I, I really liked that that was leaned into, um, you know, like Shades of Jaws and then like some disaster films, especially with the shipwreck at the beginning and stuff like that. So I was wondering, was that something that was like sort of intentionally leaned into? Did you kind of want to make it a little bit frightening? Absolutely. The whole roller coaster is fun, not just the top of it. <laughs> like uh, the, we thought about like Indiana Jones, where, where like you can, everyone wants to, wants to see that kind of adventure. And it's not really an adventure unless it's a little bit, there's, 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 there's risk, there's peril, there's a little bit of, uh, this could go wrong. Yeah. And then um, also, you know, it's like you guys have been working on this, I think uh, it was said for three years. And then two of those obviously took place during the pandemic. And so I was wondering, um, you know, having worked obviously pre-pandemic in animation for so long, did that change or shift your perspective on how you kind of are working on these movies and these projects? And do you think you'll take anything from that experience forward as you continue, you know, more doing more movies? Probably yes to both. Um, uh, production shifted. It timed out pretty nice, cleanly with uh, most of the pre-production work we were doing, like starting to just build and rig the characters and getting some what we call assets built. Um, we did that as a group together. It was a really small team. And then right as almost as soon as we started actually making the movie shots that will go in the movie, all of that was was from each other's home. So there was a, a, a shift where a lot of the team only worked from, from their home. And most of the team only worked from their home or, or, or where they were working remotely. Um, but at, so, at Sony Imageworks, um, I've kind of been doing that part for a while that way. Not from home specifically, but I've, we have a, sister, a, a, a branch that's in uh, Vancouver as well, and also Montreal, and it's, we're, we're, spread, we're spread around. So I'm used to working this, this way to begin with. So we didn't miss a beat when it was time to transition that way. The company uh, uh, impressively solved the security challenges and got everyone working that way. But for me personally, I've been working that way for years. Awesome. So it was like sort of like an easy almost leaning into it because I, I mean, you showed that video during the presentation of everybody, you know, sending each other videos and stuff like that. So it looked almost fun in a way that it might not have been if you hadn't been used to it. <laughs> Like it's it's funny like you you've worked with these people with some of these folks for years and but it wasn't until the pandemic that we're seeing each other's living rooms and seeing their kids coming in there and and, and and I loved that part of it I thought that was great and there there is another benefit and this is what I've been I've been saying for a while again because I've been talking to the team in Vancouver through screens for a long time like this um there is a is 
part of it that is a little bit more human. You are connecting face to face with a person instead of like when you're all in the same building, you go around to people's desks and you go behind their shoulder and like over the shoulder and like talk about the work in front of them. And it, 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 sometimes that can be awkward and or in the theater and everyone has to turn around, pay attention. And in this way of working, you're talking about the work in the abstract between you and you look at each other face to face. And I like that part. Yeah. And I mean, it must have been interesting to kind of parallel like that camaraderie with like the camaraderie of like monster hunting in the movie. And then obviously the relationship between uh, the two main characters, Jacob and Maisie as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. I really am looking forward to us all being able to like share a pint together and, 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 uh, and have that, that in-person camaraderie. Definitely. And so, and another thing you guys talked about during that presentation was uh, you guys focus a lot on the ropes and the movement of the sea, which I, I found fascinating because I, I always, I don't know, with the behind the scenes, scenes things of animation are always so interesting to me just because I'm more of like a, I've only studied like live visual stuff. So I was wondering, um, as far as that goes, what were there any other elements that were like specifically a challenge to bring to life for you on this film? Like, was there like the monsters of a cult or I mean, focusing on like the humans of it or? Yeah, well, well, I think both are very different challenges and there's there's some of the team excels at very different things. So, so uh, when it comes to creatures, like who, who's got the best physics? And it's, it's, it's it, they're, they're so heavy that that's, uh, that's that could be really challenging for people that have never animated something that that heavy. That's a big gear shift. Um, but we uh, we have folks at, at ImageWorks that are experts at specifically heavy, big, uh, big beasts. And then, but whenever you have human characters, like, and, and especially when they start tilting, they have a few more anatomical details, like where you can tell where there's bony landmarks and they, they're not going to be able to be water balloon heads and squ squashy or like really abstract. You have to um, uh, really just like uh, be more careful with the boundaries of, 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 of reality. I, I try and caution to not let reality ever be the goal because this is still a fantasy. Like this, this is not an exercise in recreating reality. We are making a performance and it's all choices, but those choices in this tone, in this world, just have to be a little bit more delicate. Like it's a, it's a massive difference between that pixel and the eyelid when it's this specific. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that was all the questions I have for you today, but uh, thank you so much for your time. Congratulations on the movie and I can't wait to see the rest of it.